you all so much for tuning in to a virtual tour of California State Parks. My name is Ashley and I'm an interpreter here down at the beautiful Seacliff State Beach. The sun is shining, there's a nice breeze, it's a beautiful day to be down at the beach. And also it's a very special day because it's the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. So happy Earth Day to all of you. Thanks for tuning in. Also tune in to the California State Parks Facebook page. They are doing a Facebook live stream events throughout the entire day, including a game show, which I tuned into earlier, and it is awesome. So be sure to check that out at two o'clock. Also, we are on Facebook Live, so feel free to leave any questions or comments below the video, uh, give some likes and thumbs up, uh, and feel free to share this video. We have Paul moderating, so he'll be answering your questions, um, and then I'll be answering them as well as I see them pop up. So, this program is going to be geared towards students in third to fifth grade, um, but anybody else who's tuning in, thanks a lot, and let's go ahead and get started. So, what are we gonna be talking about today? There are many things here at Seacliff that make this place very special. We have our famous SS Palo Alto, our concrete ship, we are located within the Monterey Bay that is filled with life. Uh, we have harbor seals that come by in the morning, play in the waves, uh, and I bet they're coming by to say hi to us. And we also have something that you probably won't notice unless you look very closely. And that is these fossils and these fossils are very special and they are about 5 million years old. So before we talk more about the fossils, I want to read you a little story, a little excerpt from a story. And the story that I'm going to read a part of is called Dragon in the Rocks by Marie Day. And it's about a paleontologist. Do you all know what a paleontologist is? A paleontologist is a scientist who studies fossils. And fossils can be either bones or teeth or shells. And so this story is about a paleontologist by the name of Mary Anning. And so I'm going to read you a little part of that story. All right, Mary grew up in a small house with her mother and father, her brother Joseph, and her dog Trey. Early each morning, Mary helped her mother make bread while Joseph helped his father saw wood in his workshop. The, the little house smelled of fresh bread and new cut wood and fragrant, uh, fragrant flowers for Mary's mother always kept a bouquet on the table. Mary's father made furniture to earn a living, but what he really liked best was collecting fossils. In those days, a lot of people spent their time puzzling over these strange objects they found lying on the beach and buried in the cliff. There were odd looking fish skeletons, giant seashells, and even plants, all as hard as stone. How did they get there? Could these fossils be clues to the unknown world long, long ago? Mary and her father often went down the steep path to the beach. She loved the smell of the salt air and the sound of pounding waves. Sometimes, after a heavy rain, Huge chunks of clay would fall from the cliff and crack apart as they landed on the shore. When Mary and her father examined the pieces, they found mysterious bones and shells stuck inside them. 
Mary learned from her father how to chip away the rock hard clay with the chisel and split it with a special little hammer. If she did it just right, a fossil would slide from the rock almost as easily as a baked cake slides from a greased pan. Mary's mother proudly placed the finest fossils on the mantelpiece where everyone could admire them. And where is my girl when I need help sweeping floors or collecting eggs from under the, ha from under the hens? She often said with a smile. She's down at the shore collecting fossils. It was true. Every day, as soon as school was over, Mary wanted to rush down to the beach to search for treasure from the cliffs. And so that is a brief excerpt from Dragon in the Rocks. And it's a good beginning to talk about the story of fossils here at Seacliff. And so, how did the fossils end up here at Seacliff? To help us answer that question, I need all of you to put on your imaginations. So, I've got mine, I turned mine on, mine is all set to go. And so, I invite all of you to turn on your imaginations. And if you're a little short on imagination, I'm going to send you some through the wonders of the internet. So, get ready to catch it. Here it comes. Go ahead and catch it. Turn on your imaginations. Are we all ready to go? Great. And so, we're going to start off by hopping into our time machines and going back in time five million years. And I'm going to show you a map, but before we go back to that time period, I want to show you a map of the coastline today so we get a better understanding of where I'm standing here at Seacliff. So, here is a map beautifully drawn. We've got the Pacific Ocean down here. That's the ocean that we look at here at Seacliff. And you can see Seacliff is right here. That's where I am right now. And there's a couple of other uh, towns listed. We have Santa Cruz and we have Watsonville. And we also have Monterey. And this whole body of water right here, this is the Monterey Bay. We also have a couple of other cities listed on here. We have Fresno and Bakersfield. And you might be wondering, how come those uh, cities are listed there? They're nowhere near the ocean. We'll answer that in just a minute. And the last thing I want to note about this map is we have two fault lines listed on here. And we have the San Gregorio Fault, which is this lower fault. And then we have the San Andreas Fault, probably one of the most famous fault lines in California. And so, I want you all before I give you the answer, I want you all to think about what you think this area looked like five million years ago. And if you're sitting next to somebody, go ahead and tell that person sitting next to you what you think the area looked like. All right. I'm gonna show you. Whoa! There's a lot of different things going on on this map of the Monterey Bay five million years ago. For starters, there's an island right in the middle of the bay. And if we look out onto the bay today, we don't see that island anymore. So what do you think happened to that island? Think about that for the rest of this program and I'll answer that at the end. Also, 
you'll notice that Monterey, Watsonville, Seacliff, and Santa Cruz, they're all underwater because of this inland sea that's here. And that inland sea is called the Tembler Sea. Tembler like earthquakes or a, a, a tremor. And so the inland sea was home to a lot of animals. Very, a lot of them were similar to the ones that we see today. There were whales, there were sea lions, uh, there were turtles, and there was one animal that lived in the sea that is now extinct. And meaning that uh, it doesn't live anymore. And that animal is the megalodon. And megalodon was a giant shark and its jaws were so large that a full grown person could stand straight up in their jaws. But that animal is now extinct. So, also, where I'm standing right now, since we're underwater, I would need a scuba tank so that I can talk to you all today. And let's get revisit our two cities up here, Fresno and Bakersfield. They had beachfront property. And so, if you have ever been to either one of those places, you probably noticed how hot and dry it is. So, how do scientists know that there was this inland sea? What evidence did they find? If you said fossils, like this one, you're correct. So, imagine you're in Fresno or Bakersfield, you're digging a garden, and you come across a rock that looks like this. And in this rock, there are a lot of shells of snails, and there are also, this is a, uh, this is a snail right here, and then there's a lot of different clams as well. And so most of the fossils that we find here at Sea Cliff are both uh, clams and snails. So, how do fossils get formed? I'm going to give you the recipe for how to make a fossil. And to do that, we're going to need our imagination still on. And with those, I want to introduce you to our miniature ocean. And so, let's talk about what we have here in our miniature ocean. We have our sea floor. In our case, this sea floor is made out of sand. But the sea floor can either be rock or it can be mud. But this sea floor is sand. And where does sand come from? Going up into the mountains, like the Santa Cruz Mountains around us, sand starts off as rocks up in the mountains, and as those rocks break down, they enter waterways, whether that be a stream or a river, and then all of those waterways ultimately lead to the ocean. And so, as they're moving down these waterways, they're continually breaking down into smaller and smaller pieces until you get sand that makes up our beach. And here at Sea Cliff, we have a very sandy beach. And so, there's another thing in our miniature ocean, and that is the water, because in the ocean there is water, and the ocean water has something in it. It's something that you can't see, but you probably tasted it if you've ever gone swimming in the ocean. Like if you're um, going body surfing and you're trying to catch that wave and you swallow some water and it tastes very salty. Yeah, so there's salt in the seawater. And salt 
is what's known as a mineral. And there are 46 other minerals in seawater, including some minerals that you probably don't think about, like there's silver and even iron. So lots of minerals in the seawater. And then, last but not least, we have one more thing in our miniature ocean. And that is this giant shell. And no, this animal is not alive. We wouldn't do that. This is a moon snail. And they're one of the, the cutest animals that live in the ocean. Now I'm gonna show you a picture right now. Cause they are adorable. This is a moon snail. And unlike uh, garden snail relatives, a moon snail is actually a carnivore. And so, what is a carnivore? Carnivore is an animal that eats meat. And if you have ever been walking on the beach and you find a shell that has a hole uh, in the middle like this, that's a perfectly round circle, this is probably the work of a moon snail. And moon snails have something called a radula. And that's a, <laughs> that's a, <laughs> yes, Pravina, uh, moon snails do look very squishy, although I haven't tried uh, touching them. And so they're using their radula they'll um, drill through their clamshell and then they'll suck out the insides. And this process is really slow. It takes about 24 hours. So the next time you're down at the beach, uh, keep your eye out for shells that have a perfectly uh, perfect circle at the top. So we've got our ocean that has salt which is a mineral we have our moon snail right there then we have our sea floor which in our case is sand and there's one other thing in a moon snail shell um, that we have in our bones and teeth as well and that is and it's also found in milk and it's another mineral, and that is calcium. And so that's another thing that we need. And so in bones, teeth, and shells, there's all calcium. I have a question for you. Why do we only find fossilized shark teeth? If you said you only find fossilized shark teeth because that's the only bones that sharks have, you're right. The rest of their bodies are made out of cartilage, which makes up your ears and the end of your nose. And so, we've got all of the first three things in the recipe to make a fossil. And we need two other things. The first thing we need is some sort of catastrophic event. Now this could be an underwater landslide or an earthquake. And a good example of that is the landslide that happened along the Big Sur coast in 2017. So you can see all of the sand or all the dirt that came down from that. And so you can only imagine how many animals got buried during that landslide. And if we were to visit that area five million years from now, would we find fossils? Who knows? Maybe we'll figure out a way to time travel and go check it out. And the last thing, there's actually two more things. 
One other thing we need is pressure, and that pressure is achieved through those landslides. And you can feel that pressure by squeezing your hands together like this, and you can make all that pressure. And so, we're gonna make a little, uh, our little, uh, uh, our own fossil right now. And so, I'm gonna fill up this tub with some sand to make our seafloor. And then, we need our animal which is going to be a moon snail, and so I'm going to plop uh, that moon snail right down in the middle. And then we need our catastrophic event to happen, and we also need a lot of time. So, how about we stay online for five million years and wait for this fossil to form? We're, that's a long time to wait. So I'm going to speed up that process and we're going to continue using our imaginations. And so, we have, say, in 10 years from now, we have a landslide and it begins to bury our snail. And then more time goes by and we bury it some more. And another event happens and it buries it even more and i'll do one more event just for good measure and then we'll do one more event and so now our moon snail has been buried there's a lot of pressure this container has uh, gotten heavier and let's go ahead and wait that five million years and if we do that and we come back this is what you might find this is a fossilized moon snail and so you can see that this has turned to rock and so it turns to rock because there's a chemical reaction between the calcium in the shell and the minerals in the water. And so that is how a fossil is formed. And I mentioned earlier that paleontologists are the one, are scientists who study fossils. And to do that, they use a very high-tech paleontology tool and I'm talking about your common toothbrush. And so, if you come and visit on a field trip to Seacliff State Beach, when it's safe to do so again, you might be able to look for fossils in one of our cliffs here at Seacliff and discover for yourself the wonder of fossils here at Sea Club. So with that, I want to thank you all for tuning in. If you, I'm going to double check to make sure there aren't any questions. Um, I want to wish you all a happy Earth Day. Um, continue staying safe at home, uh, tuning into these live streams. Be sure to check out uh, California State Park's Facebook page. Uh, for Earth Day live stream events, there's a game show starting at 2 o'clock. Uh, highly recommend it. It's very entertaining. And we'll be live again here at Seacliff on Friday. This video will be uploaded to the Seacliff State Beach YouTube page. Um, so if you want to re-watch re it or share it with friends or family, feel free to check it out there. And um, I want to thank Paul for moderating this live stream event. And since it's a beautiful day here at Seacliff, I'm going to flip the camera around and let you uh, take up, uh, enjoy some of the view. So thanks for tuning in and hope to see you next time that we're live.
Bye.